With the Jays D. White, the godfather among others, back at practice well before training camp, the Boston Celtics aren't complacent after winning the franchise's 18th title. The 10-man rotation of Holiday, White, Brown, Tatum, Porzingis, Pritchard, Lonnie Walker as he attempts to make the team at training camp and in the preseason, Hauser, Horford, and Tillman is looking ferocious. Chris Stapp's Porzingis' recovery is going smoothly, and you'll see a full breakdown of the film from his legendary Game 1. Joe Mazzulla's leadership carried over into the offseason, strengthening his bond between his core talent. Details on all that and more are on their way as we continue to eulogize the reigning champs amidst a flurry of contempt. Keep it locked. Right quick, just 25% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Hit thumbs up as it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and X at dflowhoops for a follow back. Best believe the Celtics have a lot more in store for the universe to adhere to. Done celebrating the fact that Tatum, Brown, White, and Horford are already practicing with the likes of this team's young talent in J.D. Davison and Jordan Walsh, let's the roster 1-15 through 15 know about their commitment level. Training camp does open early for teams playing preseason games outside of North America, which the Celtics will in Abu Dhabi, but not until the 25th of September does that training camp open. The team's top three options in the 2024 playoffs have already been at camp for a few days now. This sets a foundation of non-complacency for Boston as they get set for the rest of the core to join them. Jalen Brown said at Summer League he had already talked to Al Horford and some of his teammates about when to get back in the gym, and they've now fulfilled that plan and are putting in work at the Auerbach Center. For Chris Stapps Porzingis, he's been putting in work in Latvia, but will now join the rest of the early arrivals in Boston. Celtics fans will never forget when Porzingis returned after missing 10 playoff games to battle through a foot injury that he'd eventually have surgery on later in June. He'd play three games in the finals, but specifically shined in Game 1, where he scored 20 points in 21 minutes while being a menace defensively. Immediately upon checking in, he'd rotate to the pocket to smother Derrick Jones Jr. and force the miss, before on the other side drawing the foul on his former teammate Luka Doncic from the post and draining a pair. He'd then get Jaden Hardy switched onto him, up fake twice and jab step five times while dealing with the Hardy flop before knocking down the face up. After neutralizing PJ Washington's fast break attempt, he'd fake the DHO and get a wide open lane for a two handed throwdown out of it. Operating in a deeply low drop coverage, he'd go forearm to body instead of two hands up to square up Hardy's drive and lunge out for the SWAT, then expose the much smaller Josh Green guarding him who flops just like Hardy, and it's another face-up for his 8th straight point. With Pritchard pushing the tempo, he's the trailer on this play where he'd catch and shoot from 30 for the deep-range bomb. On the very next possession defensively, it's more drop coverage obliteration, as he's there to reject Kyrie on the baseline to cap off an all-time great NBA Finals quarter that no one's forgetting anytime soon, he'd pull off a defensive play for the ages by scoping out Josh Green's strides and timing up the as-clean-as-it-gets denial. To kick off the second, it was another face-up from the high post where he transitions to a back down and sweeps through to hit what turns into an extremely deep floater from the foul line. More post-mastery sees Tingus Pingus again expose the smaller Josh Green. He then nail another catch-and-shoot from 30, this time in the face of Luka, and defensively, this was his best sequence of the night as he shuts down Luka, forces Derrick Jones Jr. into the DHO, funnels Kyrie to the baseline where Irving is trapped, then rotates back to Jones Jr. for the rejection. Just a ridiculous, limited-minute performance all around. Although Porzingis would miss games 3 and 4, that opening night of the finals showcased the type of player he genuinely is. A player willing to leave everything out on the court no matter the cost. Porzingis is usual backup, but the man he was backing up to kick off the finals in Horford also had a hell of a game won against Dallas on the defensive end. Watch Al's elite switchability with his low center of gravity, fundamental hands up at all times positioning, and insane lateral quickness for a 38 year old to funnel both Luka and Kyrie to the exact same spot on a couple early opening quarter possessions. Horford's wherewithal to scramble to make the proper rotations, then stay composed when guarding on the ball, then read and react to shot attempts with his quick twitch hand-eye coordination, was throwing off the Mavericks' two best players all game long. In other news, Joe Mazzulla continues to build up a bond with a few of his core pieces throughout the offseason. 
Joe went with Al Horford when he brought the Larry to the Dominican Republic, and according to Bill Simmons, Missoula traveled to France to visit Jason Tatum when things weren't going well for him at the Olympics. It's a shame the mainstream media doesn't view this man as a better man in charge, as ESPN's Kendrick Perkins said one time that if you take his brain out and you put it in the bird, the bird is going to start flying backwards, okay? And as mentioned in my last video, CBS tried destroying his value recently as well. When speaking on the newly acquired Lonnie Walker's fit, Missoula said, quote, He's been in the league for a long time. He's played in a lot of games, so he's got experience, he's got the ability to score, and he can impact the game on the defensive end. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter who you are, we just want guys to come in and work hard. Pay attention to the details. Be yourself and fill the best role you can for the team. End quote. He's on a training camp deal that'll come to an end after the preseason if he's not extended, but Walker's already gotten accustomed to the Celtics training facility, as according to Noah Dalzell, he's been on the practice court daily in hopes of securing a firm roster spot that he has the talent to lock down. Detailing the mentality the Celtics have to have in order to repeat as world champions, here's what Tatum had to say recently. Proud of you know what we were able to accomplish. Uh, to come into the next season and just say we're going to do it again um, would be like insensitive. I think that yeah. a lot has to go right and our mindset is not let's win the championship again. Let's start over, let's get better every single day and not skip any step. And that's why we were successful last season. Starting over they'll have to do in the truest sense, given what 24-25 is going to be like is something they've never experienced before. Leading up to the 23-24 season, Boston had gotten close year after year, but failed to get over the hump. Whether it was losing a down-to-the-wire Game 7 to LeBron and the Cavs in 2018 without Kyrie due to injury and of course the traded away Isaiah Thomas, the Kyrie era which resulted in a ton of drama and a second round exit to Milwaukee, losing in the conference finals to Miami in the bubble, being without Jalen Brown due to a torn ligament in his wrist in 2021 and going down to Kyrie and the Nets in the first round, faltering a 2-1 series lead in the 2022 finals to Stephen Curry and the Golden State Warriors, or getting blown out in Game 7 to Miami after Tatum's first quarter ankle injury in 2023, the Celtics have always entered the offseason and succeeding season with a chip on their shoulder, not a chip, and have been out for revenge as a result of that. 24-25, therefore, will be a different animal in terms of the type of challenge it'll be. So the lack of complacency Boston showing from the jump is therefore a tremendous sign. This was your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.